Good. All right, then <laughs> call to order um, at 6.03 p.m. Um, welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here. Too easy for the end of the school week. Um, uh, just need to make some changes to our agenda. Um, we're going to be moving uh, executive session, executive session um, that's at the end of the agenda up um, to the, the second thing on the agenda. And I'm going to include, um, where is that? I'm going to include uh, that's an executive session under 313A3. Uh, it's currently listed just contracts in our agenda. So I want to include um, the appointment or employment of public office. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I can't actually figure out how to see people and look at my my to do list here. Um, okay. So, all right. Thanks, everyone. Hi. <laughs> um, I wanted to just start off right away and congratulate Mark um, formally and publicly in our meeting for uh, being promoted to be not the interim superintendent but our superintendent and uh, leader of the district here. Um, and also congratulate everyone for wrapping up another really harrowing year. It's been two really long years. It's been a lot for everyone. Um, and so I just, I'm, I'm happy that it's summertime for everyone, but I'm, I'm just really impressed. And um, I don't know, I don't know how to say the thank you because I know it's been an exhausting two years. And I'm, I'm just hopeful that as we continue to roll in and Mark goes into his second year, which is something I've never experienced two consecutive years of a superintendent. So I'm really hopeful <laughs> um, that, that things feel a little bit lighter for everyone. Um, so the first thing on our, our agenda is we have a guest presenter, Phil Gore, who's the Director of Board Services um, from the, the Vermont School Board Association. Um, and it just, I'm mostly just going to say this for the sake of the public, um, but the reason that this is on the agenda, because it felt a little bit weird right after we signed the contract with Mark, um, and it won't shock any board members, is, um, is that um, certainly in having conversations with Mark, um, we all agree that it's, it's only fair, it's fair for Mark and necessary for him to have an evaluation, so, uh, or an evaluation uh, process that's in place um, and an outline so that um, there's clearly defined job duties and, um, you know, outlines of proficiency and, and uh, and whatnot. So it's the most, one of the most important elements of this board's work, and it's something that hasn't existed post-merge. We've never really reorganized and restructured ourselves. Um, and so this is step one um, of many things that we need to do to start uh, being able to work better together. So with that, um, and then I'm going to get back to my Zoom page. Oh, that's why I can't see it. With that, I'm going to welcome Phil. And Phil, hi. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think we we're just hoping that you can maybe do an overview of the what the school board association provides um, uh, with a with a superintendent evaluation, and um, who can just give us a look at what it looks like and share your thoughts on it with us. Yeah, well, we have a, a superintendent evaluation service, and uh, it. It's sort of like a 360 evaluation. It really gives an opportunity for all of the direct reports of the superintendent to weigh in on um, leadership and management skills that are uh, kind of outlined, in, if you will, in certification standards uh, for superintendents. And then also has uh, room in there for the board to have board adopted goals for the superintendent, what you wanted, uh, in this case, him uh, to accomplish in the past year. We, uh, we administer that as an online survey. Uh, so all of the board members are able to kind of rate the, uh, the superintendent. What I really like about our, our process is there's a rubric. And so it's not simply, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, thumbs up, thumbs down. There's actually, you know, this is what doesn't meet expectations looks like all the way to, you know, excels and exceeds expectations, but clearly denotes uh, what that might look like. And, and so all of the board members uh, contribute to that. Uh, the superintendent also importantly does a self-evaluation. 
And then the VSBA provides a report with a summary of that information back to the board um, once it's completed. Cool, I didn't know that. <laughs> Um, have all the board members had a chance to look at that rubric? Is that something we want to pull up at all? I think it'd be useful to, um, for Phil to point out a few of the, the uh, items that, um, you know, you mentioned that it gives, that it's really concrete, uh, not just a, you know, one, two, three, four. And maybe just find, provide some examples for that. Because uh, there still seems to be a lot of room for, for subjectivity. Yeah, um, th there is, and yet it's uh, it's sort of represented in this rubric. And I I don't have that rubric open at my fingertips. I'm I'm not well uh, this evening. I don't know if Michelle shared that with everyone, um, but I I would be happy to send you a sample of it uh, by email. Um, get that for you here tonight. Great, that'd be fine. Is that fine? Okay. So um, I think my only question, I have gotten a chance to look at it, and um, I think it's helpful because it really, for me, defines the, the work of what our superintendent does, which, um, you know, we actually don't have, like, a clear job description sort of outlined. Um, and so I appreciated that. But is, is, uh, is the, the structure that you have, is it something that that's, there's ever a time and a place to customize it, or is it... I mean, I guess you're developing goals, so that would be standard every year? Yes, the, uh, essentially the superintendent standards, they're, they're provided and the rubrics then developed uh, to support the performance on those standards. But then when it comes to the goals, those are developed by the board and superintendent at the beginning, ideally, of the evaluation um, period. And does it matter if there is no existing evaluation or if there's never been one in place? Well, if, you, if you're really looking for a baseline, um, you know, you could do the service at the beginning of the period and that would provide, yeah, since your current superintendent is known in the district and has been there as an interim, um, you know, it might provide some valuable feedback for him if, if you wanted to do that. Okay. And, and that would also give you an opportunity to be able to chart progress throughout the year. Um, I mean, in theory, you could use this same process twice a year, once as a formative assessment and then uh, a summative assessment. And I think we could work with you to make sure that's, um, you know, to your advantage financially and so forth. Um, if that's of interest, but I, I do think it would be really valuable to have a baseline at this point. Um, and, and it wouldn't be, I mean, you're not formally evaluating the superintendent on his first day on the job, uh, but you're providing that baseline for him to consider uh, and for the board to have conversation ongoingly. And how, how much would Mark part, like participate in working out some of the details around anything that was customized or goals? I mean, I think there's like a self-assessment piece is pretty standard. Um, well, yes, there's the self-assessment that he would provide, but you know, good governance would be that he's very involved in the goal setting and um, that those are developed. You know, if, if we work together to do that or whether you do that on your own, um, kind of a smarter type framework where they're, you know, specific and measurable and there's some room in there that, you know, shows how they'll be re um, evaluated, what success looks like, right? Yeah. Does anyone else have any other questions? I, I actually spent, I read, the, read through all of it, so I feel informed. <laughs> Michelle, I read it. I read through all of it too, and it it's pretty detailed. So, actually, yeah, I, I did just find that Michelle. I, is there? Um, would you, could I share the screen, or it, if everybody um, says, I would it be? Think what I, have to do, I think what I have to do is make you a co-host, which I just did. So okay. now you should be able to share your screen. Now let me see if I can share this window. 
We also have a question from Allie West and Jill Gruda. We get to them. Is that showing up? Yes. Yes. Okay. Love to improve the view a little bit. Make it. Is it large enough in the room there? Everybody can read that. It's not projecting. It's only on people. Yeah, only people would have their uh, screens on on Zoom. Oh, okay. Um, there we go. I want to get down to the rubric because I, I do think this is really the crux of this. Uh, coincidentally, superintendent evaluation was the topic for my doctoral dissertation a few years ago. And I really think this idea of a rubric is is very um, best practice very much. Uh, so in the board superintendent relationship, this you know first example, um, what does ineffective look like when we're talking about information? Uh, simply, and if some of you are educators there, you you know this this is a typical rubric the way it's laid out. Um, does not provide the information the board needs to perform its responsibilities. A new superintendent would often be in the developing category, right? They're learning to do this, and so they might be making some mistakes. Um, keep some, some board members informed, making it difficult for the board to perform its responsibilities. And then effective, you know, keeps the board informed with appropriate information, highly effective, keeps the board informed with professional timely communications so that it may perform its responsibilities. And that's just one, one example. Uh, let me try to pull up another one that's not board superintendent relationship. There's policy, business, and finance. So with uh, budget development, um, in the ineffective, the superintendent's budget knowledge is limited. The budget's developed and managed without taking into consideration current needs of the district. And then all the way to the, the highly effective, budget actions are proactive and consider both current and long range information and data. A balance is sought to meet the current and future needs of students and remain fiscally responsible to the community. One of the things I really appreciate about what VSBA has put in place for this is that feedback from the direct reports. Um, I've been in this work for uh, going on 20 years now and there, it's always a complaint that, you know, we don't, we're not with the superintendent day in and day out. We don't know exactly what he does, what he doesn't do. And so the board gets to see, here's, here's their perception, their ratings. Here's the feedback from people that are with him every day. And here's the superintendent's self-assessment. So there's an opportunity to calibrate. Michelle, I know there were hands up, so I'm trying to be quiet. Oh, sure, we can take I was looking and thinking, I would have to ask Frank those questions <laughs> to know the answers because he's the only qualified person in my mind to assess Mark in that way. Um, I'm So I'm sorry, I can't- uh, Allie West. Allie West, go ahead, ask your question. You'll have to unmute, Allie. Sorry, sorry, Dave, it took me a minute. Ignore the barking. My one question, and I'm, I'm here for the meeting for something different, but is there a way that not only does the board assess the superintendent, but the public also gets to put in their say as well, or is that not something that can happen? Is that a question for Michelle or for me? It's for anybody who feels like answering. Uh, Phil, I'll let, I'll let you answer, but I know, I know that the board, uh, and I guess that's where we talk about if, um, like accommodate, like, you know, customizing, because I think that's important to the board is um, that's the idea of the 360 is to have, you know, all stakeholders maybe um, feedback, but you, what, what, what is what is standard or recommended? Well, our, our press, our process doesn't include uh, feedback from the public. And, um, you know, there, there's some drawbacks to feedback from the public. Uh, what you're going to tend to get is customer complaints. Um, and not necessarily what you really think of as constituents, but just a customer that wasn't satisfied uh, with something that was done. So there's a there's a risk there um, of it being very negatively skewed. You know, who would opt in or take the time to complete a service from the public? However, 
you know, I would highly recommend that the board have a system for um, public feedback of the superintendent and of the performance of the supervisory union. Um, I just wouldn't think superintendent evaluation would be the time to do that. That's a, it's really the purview of the board um, as representatives of the public to make that determination. But. Um, Joe? Hello, thanks. Um, so I guess, um, I guess my question is for Phil really around the idea of, um, I mean, the intent of this is while it is an evaluation tool, is it also, is there also an intent around, um, development of an individual so that they can grow in their leadership capacity, um, such that it's not merely just a, here you are, this is what you're doing, but also this would be uh, a rubric for growth and for development of Mark or any other superintendent skill set. Yeah, very much so. I mean, that's that's a great point of the value of a rubric like this is it does allow the superintendent to self-assess and reflect where am I at on this scale? Uh, but then, you know, the board and, and the other people that are weighing in um, direct reports, uh, how's the superintendent doing? It, you know, superintendent evaluation at its heart, uh, Joe, and maybe this is what you were expressing, it, it really should be about growth, um, not just an opportunity to gotcha, but an opportunity to give valuable and uh, objective feedback. Joe, would you mind un unsharing your screen now so we can see each other again? Oh, Phil. Phil. Oh, Phil, yeah. sorry. <laughs> sorry, Phil. Got it. Thanks, Phil. You got it. No more hands. Okay. Oh, I, I'd like to thank Joe for um, asking that question because I, I would like, um, there's always the potential in any position, any, you know, parent is, is being evaluated by their kids, uh, the kid is being evaluated by the parent, any location where you work, um, there's always the potential to see something as, any type of evaluation as a negative thing. And so I, I really appreciate having the question about how can we look at this in a way that's going to um, focus on growth rather than, you know. Yeah, as, as, do, I, as do I, and I know I've, I've heard Mark speak as such in supporting other staff and just the idea of, of building someone up. And I, I, do, I, I personally see evaluation systems as a way of getting at people on the same page and the understanding what is anticipated and I mean it, it helps us to us to be accountable and the person to be accountable but to see to be able to identify strengths but also um, to, to you know um, intercept if there's an area that could use some support and I would want to we want to support her all of our staff it's not just for the superintendent I would hope that that would be mirrored down and I think it will with Mark in the superintendent's seat um, yeah. Michelle, I would just echo this is, you know, this is a, a good time to get off to a great start. And so starting with clarity, um, the more clarity that you can have between you and Mark. And then, of course, in fairness, uh, the clarity in what Mark needs from the board. Uh, I think that's that's a legitimate question you need to consider ongoingly. Uh, what does the superintendent need from this board to be successful in what we're asking him to do? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Actually, I love that because I think I think we do have some reorganizing to do, and I do see this as sort of a fresh start. Um, it's we've been in crisis since pretty much the district merged, and it happened very rapidly, and policies were adopted in in, in bulk, and um, and I know uh, Monday schools were canceled, and Tuesday I, I took my oath and became a school board member. So they're high, we're actually seeing normalcy, and and we haven't really had a chance to all. I mean, we've only all sat in a room together for a few months. It's crazy to think about. So, Mark, what are your thoughts? Do you mind me putting you on the spot? And no, not at all. I, I think uh, Phil alluded to clarity and how important that is um, for all sides in, in terms of growth, in terms of goal setting, in terms of expectation. So that feels really good to me, having clarity, getting on the same page, and working towards goals together, hopefully. 
and I do see it as an opportunity to reset and kind of recharge. Yeah, I'm I'm actually really excited to start working on some of some like strategies on, on working together and um, because we want to support you. Yeah. <laughs> um, your success is everyone's success. <laughs> yes, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. All right. Anyone any other questions before we have to dip into executive session? I just said dip. <laughs> Chad's over there. <laughs> okay, I don't see any. <laughs> okay, um, so um, I'm going to start with we need a motion um, that finding premature that finding that premature general public knowledge. Um, oh well, I should I should start. Let me be clear that we're going into an executive session on a matter of confidentiality um, for personnel, um, and that would indicate a disadvantage for them. Uh, because they have the right to have their their work confidential. So I need a motion um, finding that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the personnel involved at a substantial disadvantage. So moved. Thank you, David. Do I have a second? A second. Kelly seconded. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Okay, ayes have it. Then I will need a motion to enter executive session under 1 BSA 313 A1A contracts. Uh, and the BSA 313A3, the appointment employment public officer employee, employee uh, variety with public body shall make a final decision on hire. I think I have the wrong thing written down, <laughs> but um, we'll go with it. <laughs> Can I have a motion? Are we inviting anyone in? Oh, or? yes. Uh, yes, I'm going to invite Mark Spino in and actually Phil Gorin. He'll join us. Do I have that motion first? Kelly's motion. Motion with it. Second? I'll second. Thank you, Liz. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, we are going to enter executive session. Those of you in Zoom world, you'll be placed in a waiting room. Uh, and we'll do our best to be busy. Uh, we rose to executive session progress. at 7.30. Okay, I just need to get back to my agenda. Sorry, that was longer than 15 minutes, everyone. I should know now. I'm never going to tell time. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so moving on, we are at approval of our minutes for May 11th and May 25th. Um, we do need, uh, I need a motion to amend the minutes from May 25th to identify the roll call appropriately on the action taken for the chair to sign a contract for the continued employment of an administrator to specify that Kelly Young voted yes. Carrie Amadon voted no. Liz Adams voted yes. David Joles voted yes. Could you do that again? Because I have to get it into the minutes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the uh, amendment to the minutes for May 25th to identify roll call appropriately an action taken for the chair to sign a contract for the continued employment of an administrator to specify that right. you got those. So Kelly, yes. Um, Carrie, Amadon, no. Liz, yes. David, yes. No, okay. and the chair doesn't yes. vote unless it's a tie. And you didn't vote, okay. Right. Okay. okay. Got so, it. Someone want to make that motion? Oh, so moved. <laughs> Thank you, David. Do I have a second? One second. Second. Uh, again, I'm going to give it to Kelly. She got in there. So all in favor, aye. 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 Okay. Uh, nays or abstentions? Hearing none. The yeah, ayes have it. Thank you. It's amended. Oh, so then can I have uh, a motion to approve the minutes for May 11th and May 25th with that amendment? <laughs> Sorry. So moved. Thank you, Carrie. Second? Second. Second. <laughs> Sorry, Liz, you got to pick up the minutes. Thanks, David. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay. Um, moving on to approving the warrants and payrolls. Um, I would, we need, I'd like to approve the warrants for May 11th in the amount of $544,023.43 and May 25th, 2022 um, in the amount of $920,287.83. A motion. Thank you, Liz. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, David. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay. Warrants are approved. Now I'm moving on to payrolls. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the payrolls period for May 6th 
uh, in the amount of $500,354.93, and May 20th, uh, $512,100.49. So moved. Thank you, Liz. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, all in favor to approve payrolls from those states? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay, next in line are new hires, retirements, and resignations. What do you have, Mark? Okay, so we have a request for a one year leave of absence, one resignation, and then a number of new hires. Um, so I'll start with the one year leave of absence request it is from Mary Allison Kelly, who is a special educator at BUHS, and that request is supported by administration. Can I have a motion to approve a one-year leave of absence? Um, I heard Mary. Um, <laughs> Mary Allison Kelly. Kelly. You can you know, send those names to Barb and she can put it. Yeah, great. Barb Allison. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, do I have a motion to approve the leave of absence as presented by our superintendent? So moved. Thank you, David. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Liz. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Ayes have it. Okay. And we, unfortunately, we have a resignation. Um, when of Southeast Supervisory Union Pre-K Coordinator Heather Moeller has decided to, she was hired a couple months ago. She's now decided to take on a different opportunity that's been presented to her. Unfortunately. Do I have a motion <coughs> to accept the resignation with regrets as presented by Mark? So moved. <laughs> no, we can not wait. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you, David. Second to that. Uh, all in favor uh, to accept that resignation as presented by Mark? With regret. Aye. With regret, yes. Aye. With great regrets. The eyes have it. Thank you. And okay, handful of new hires. Um, Eileen Arama, BUHS Special Education Social Worker. And Catherine Kimberly, Oak Grove Special Educator. Whitney Lime, um, Special Education Coordinator, Elementary Special Education Coordinator. Uh, Cheryl McDaniels, BUHS Special Educator. Rebecca Olmstead. Um, Wyndham Southeast Supervisory Union School Nurse Leader slash COVID Coordinator. Selena Romo, UHS Special Educator. And Ann Shaughnessy, uh, Wyndham Southeast Supervisory Union School Psychologist. Wow. Eight. That's awesome. Yeah. Exciting. So That's... moved. <laughs> In your second. <laughs> All right, I got a first and a second on approving the hires. Uh, as Ms. Kelly in the second? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's excellent news. Those are, that's a lot of um, well positions being filled. Yeah. And, and a psychologist, and, a, and, a, and we're shifting and a social to worker. Rebecca. That's also great yeah. for our district nurse, our uh, coordinator there. Mm -hmm. Can we ask how we're doing overall? Uh, where we still have, in terms of the S central office positions. We have um, behavior coach open still and literacy coach, but we're potentially have some interviews lined up for, for literacy, which is great. And we're chipping away. Um, we still have openings. Um, we still have classroom teacher openings, some special educator openings. Um, candidate pools have definitely tightened up, but um, so we're getting there. Okay. Yeah. Better position now than we were a month ago or two months ago for sure. Okay. And when is Tate's start date? That would be July 1. <laughs> However, we've had some transition meetings already and he'll be in the office next week um, for some transition meetings with uh, Shelly and Liz and actually Whitney will be joining us next week as well. So we're starting that transition process, but they don't officially start until right. July 1. Can I ask something? Can I ask something? Of course. Uh, um, Mark, I was wondering if it might be good for us to advertise in states that are getting slammed by their state governments, like Texas, uh, Florida, 
states that are, you know, shutting out educators and they're getting fed up. And I'm wondering if it would work for us to to advertise in those in that or those states, because um, people I don't know if you know, realize, but we I've seen at least three uh, posts on Facebook, people fleeing Oklahoma and Texas three in the last two weeks um, and they're coming here. I don't know where they're going to live, but um, it just <laughs> it occurred. It occurred to me that, you know, they're they're educate uh, teachers are like just quitting because of all the interference in, you know, from the state government inside the schools. Yeah, it's a good suggestion, Liz. Um, the formats that we are currently using um, to advertise do cover all states in the United States, um, but we could potentially look at targeting like publications in certain areas if there's like a, a flux of people leaving for whatever reason. Is there a way you can put Vermont ads in the Texas school spring or they have to go to school spring and click on Vermont? You can't steal there. Depends, it depends on how a candidate filters it. So they can filter it with say just sixth grade teacher or elementary yep. teacher yep. and you'd get you know, a million. Yeah. Yep. But if you filtered it Vermont elementary, it narrows it down. So. But there is that access through School Spring and Indeed and, and some of the other publications that we talked about earlier this year. Hmm. Okay. Um, we have no unfinished business that I'm aware of. Does anyone have anything? I don't think so. I think okay. I think we've got our plate full tonight. All right. Uh, food service contracts. So I think that's you, Frank. Okay. Um, David, am I still on the share screen? My, uh, let me just, can you, well, see if it works and I'll, I'll, see, I don't know if you lose it when I move you out or not, but, um, All right. make, uh, I'll make it co-host again just to be sure. Okay. Yeah. It looks like I need to do it again. Okay. So you should be okay. Yep. All right. Okay. So, um, I'm, uh, proposing that <clears throat> we renew the cafe services now called Fresh Picks um, food service contract for the fiscal year 23. Um, there's a reminder of this, so I've, I've shared that contract with you on the Zoom screen. Do, do you, does everybody see that all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> so this represents the fixed rate oh, yes, per meal oh, um, that uh, <clears throat> is part of a five-year uh, bid and this is the fifth year so for those of you that were here last year you may remember uh, we had the same conversation this is a requirement from the uh, child nutrition program the agency of ed that uh, boards do, do an annual review of renewing those um, those five-year bid uh, each each year of the five years. So this is our fifth year. Um, and what you see here is uh, this document I'm sharing um, is the three Brattleboro Town School District uh, schools uh, as part of the Wyndham Southeast School District. Um, the, the pricing. Um, and as a point of reference, uh, all of the numbers, the fixed rate per unit uh, are up about 6.7, uh, 6.8 percent from um, the prior year, the same document you would have seen last year. So that's no surprise to us, knowing the challenges of labor increases as well as supply um, constraints. You know, you you were here a couple of meetings ago, um, and um, you know, hearing the accolades for Ali West in our partnership with Fresh Picks. Um, just, you know, a terrific uh, group that we've um, been very fortunate to work with. So um, I also sent a motion uh, mm -hmm. to the board and I'll, I'll put it here on the screen. Um, actually, before I do, let me just scroll through. So that's the three Brattleboro schools. 844,000 total when we apply the estimated 
uh, meals. Uh, the Dummerston, a little bit of a different cost uh, structure for Dummerston, Guilford, and Vernon, mainly because of the volume. Smaller sites are a little bit more expensive to operate, uh, but it's the same uh, change. Uh, 381000 is the estimated annual cost. And then for the high school, same rate increases, uh, 723000 is the estimate. When we add all of those numbers up, that, that's about, um, uh, what is that? That's about um, 1.9 million. If you go to the budget that you approved back in uh, December for 2023, it's actually very close to that. So we were, we were um, um, able to estimate um, the future back in December pretty accurately. The, these um, volume numbers do reflect a substantial increase in the number of meals served because we're emerging out of the pandemic and we expect participation to be uh, back to pre-pandemic um, uh, norms. And then the other thing I want to make sure folks are aware of is the S-100, the Vermont bill, um, that is, uh, that affects the revenue side, doesn't affect this side of the, uh, the, the budget. Um, these are the expense side. Um, uh, part of that provision returns us back to the pre-pandemic child nutrition uh, national school lunch program administrative rules, which means that uh, we, we can no longer uh, supply those breakfasts and lunches to our uh, nonprofit child care centers. They they have to they have to um, you know do what they did before and they there is an avenue for them to access um, uh, ch child nutrition programs but not through the public school system um, so that's they've been notified um, and that's July first uh, and that is no that fortunately that the is uh, the stay. summer program will continue through uh, September and. Um, and then it will be in um, September that um, those independent programs need to return back to their procedures. Um, it's, it's also because there's so many rules that go with counting meals, up, um, getting applications for free and reduced from parents, uh, being accountable for the monitoring, the food safety. We're not we're not built to take all of those rules on. They suspended most of those rules, not the food safety, but a lot of a lot of the mechanics of managing. Uh, and that's why it was realistic. And Allie and Fresh Picks did such a great job. You and you heard you know John Sessions and so many others uh, pitched in to make that work for our communities. Um, but we are heading back, hopefully, toward more of a of a of a normal. Um, school environment which returns us back to those those um, operational kind of goals so i will click back over here on the motion um and uh glad to try to answer any questions if you have them does anyone have any questions okay well then uh, can i have a motion to approve the food service management contract with fresh fix cafe uh, for the uh, FY 2023 year five of five year mutual agreement to manage child nutrition programs at Academy, Green Street, Oak Grove, BUHS, Summerston, Guilford, and Vernon Schools. So moved. Liz. Liz. No. Second for yeah. Kelly. Kelly, yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you, Frank. Okay. You're welcome. That, yeah. Oh, and you know, thanks also to uh, Mary Lou Steiner and uh, Susan uh, Gabowski at our office. They they do a tremendous job with all of the compliance requirements and uh, working with with uh, Fresh Picks and state officials and so on. They organize volunteers. They they just do a tremendous amount to make this thing work. So. They've done a really excellent job. Yeah, <laughs> These yeah. last two years have been amazing, and I'm, I will in the fall invite them to come in and talk a little bit about that because I'm so I, I'm still like wow that they were creating professional development and you know it's mm -hmm. just such an intricate system. But it's um, yeah, thank you. Okay, where where am I? Sorry. Um, 
Next, what is next? Oh, the VCTV agreement. Um, um, so I need the board. So um, VCTV has changed. Um, they had they had a couple different rates over the last couple of years because of um, COVID, and as it dissipates, they're going back. Um, so their new pricing will be one hundred and fifty dollars per meeting that they cover, um, and. Um, I, 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 th I think that it'd be nice to uh, schedule them to at least um, come for all of our regularly scheduled meetings. Um, and we can use our discernment if we need to ask them to come for uh, something that's off schedule. But um, does that make sense to anybody? Does anyone have a conversation about that? Yeah, I, well, I wasn't on the board last year, but it seemed like, well, of course, you were doing a superintendent search, so you were meeting a lot. I'm just wondering what, well, this year we're doing this, all of this, so we'll probably keep on meeting a lot. I'm just thinking if we schedule the sec was it the first and third we don't we were second Wednesday we were trying oh, to be, once we were trying Wednesday. to be once a month second right. Wednesday and we were trying I think we had it laid out so we literally had eight meetings regular meetings so that's what we would schedule and then hope for if we needed more that they would be available like they were tonight. Yes. Yeah, so this okay. is a regular, well, I mean, it's not a regular, but it is our monthly meeting. It was a little off schedule. Oh, okay. so yeah, I, I would I'm not this used is to our, Yeah, yeah, no. Um, because it, like what Carrie said, we did the second and then um, and then we were asked actually to push it off because um, Frank had a bunch of things that couldn't be, be taken up until tonight. Um, so um, I guess the motion would be, um, you know, approving, um, contracting them to cover our regular board meetings. I, I don't. Um, I mean, we could revisit that with budget season. I, I guess that's the only thing. Um, what if we said we authorize the chair to use her discretion for when an agenda is warrants, <laughs> well, warrants a BCTV being here to film? If, if we're only having an executive session. I agree. Yeah, it makes sense. But, but if we've got something where we are doing warrants and we are doing hiring and contracts, and that like an agenda like this to me warrants VCTV. Yeah. I, I agree. So I, I, yeah. is everyone comfortable giving Michelle the use my discernment? Okay. So then be C T V happy with three or four days no three or four days notice. That's adequate. Um hopefully we as we continue to work on our develop our own structure and, and work with Mark, we'll have it will have more than three or four days notice. Um and that we'll, we'll have something more usually routine. Monday for you know warm Monday for Wednesday meeting because we don't have all the information. Or maybe it's different, or it'll, maybe it'll be different. It seems like that's always the case. Mm -hmm. Or if you Is try to have your heavy agendas on the second Wednesday. Uh, yeah, month. Wednesday. Yeah. Yep. And I, I would. I, does the site? Do we continue? Everyone still feels good about this. I know that our SD schedule kind of gets scrambled up a little bit too. But if, if we're con consistent with that, I'm happy to schedule. BCTV to come to our these types of regular second, meetings. Second, yeah. Um, yeah. And I and I bet you that I'll I'll turn to somebody and say, what do you think? Should I have them come to this meeting? We were covering this. So how about so, uh, uh, per meeting for our regularly scheduled meetings and as needed. And as needed works for me. And then we'll see how much we spend this year when we go the next year's budget. Yeah. Okay. We'll get it right the year after. Clarify the pricing. I don't know if you saw this latest document. Um, I thought, they, I, what, are, what are you looking at? Uh, 175 oh. for a hybrid meeting. Okay. In-person meetings, 150. And then okay. any Zoom editing would be $75 per Okay, so $175 for and hybrid. you edit all the Zoom. You edit all those, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's actually going to be 250 The Zoom editing is 75 Is Is that what the... Zoom editing is $75. Is the Zoom editing on top of the filming, or is the Zoom um, editing we handle? We hand them the Zoom and they deal. I don't really know about that. Okay. I'd ask well, we know much. Helena at BCTV should be the one, the best person to talk yeah. to about that information. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. what we, what we, what you see when you watch BCTV is very different than what the right. meetings. They, you know, they really clean it up. And I can, I can get clarity. I um. I and I I guess I did I guess I don't, I had written down one fifty I don't know why because um, this has my name on it and I don't even remember seeing that. Um, so we table it. And yeah, it. we can um, we can table it. I I I asked them to come and I knew that we had money that we had reserved for this year anyway and um, 
I, I read editing Zoom recordings as as if we did if we record and hand it to them to let's to find out. Tune, but yeah. but I'll I'll get a little bit more a little bit more clarity um a little bit more clarity on this. But I think and I think the other thing important thing is to remember that hybrid meetings are only legal as of now until January or like twentieth or something like that or January eleventh. Um, I thought all remote meetings. Remote, remote, the remote, remote option is in legislation until this coming January. Right. right. Uh, hybrids, hybrid. Hybrids, there's no regulation there's no around regulation it except that hybrids. the um, people that are coming online aren't guaranteed uh, right. the rights so, that we have if they were here. But I, I can't imagine that they'll the legislation is going to end away. the yeah. public access to through remote. I mean, this right. is going to always be available. I think we're going to have to meet next week, and this will be an easy thing to. To address. Yeah. We'll have yeah. Yeah. So table to okay. so we'll table this to our next meeting. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Website development and design bid. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me give you an update on that. Um, so I'll share the screen again. Um, so we, we work with a group called uh, TMS Solutions. They're a, they're a business consulting group specifically for for schools um, that uh, assist with a variety of things, including uh, RFP development. So, so uh, as a result of the board's discussion and um, and some of the requests, uh, we asked uh, this group and our contact is Andy Brown to develop a request for proposal on our behalf. So he here is the actual RFP that got. Uh, um, published and I don't know if you recall Michelle but I shared this with our with all of our boards um, before it went out uh, Carrie you made a couple of comments and and, um, and we're pleased to see that we it, it, the bid opening was today at 2 um, I was thinking we were going to address this on the 22nd and we'd have the time to uh, to uh, analyze the bids, but I'll, I'll just give you a status of where we are now. So here's here's the the, the bid RFP as I, I as I say. Maybe I'll just scroll to the uh, scope of services. Um, this just outlines the rules of and you know in, engaging in the process. But uh, here here are the um, scope of services. Um, this, this first one, uh, assess uh, and audit the, the current website, obviously, is important to understand um, what we've been accustomed to and, you know, areas for improvement. Uh, the second bullet is probably the most important in that it's the engagement of, of um, this, the board, the staff, you know, parents, community, um, as, as part of understanding the structure, the um, uh, content, you know, and problems that need to be addressed as a result of this. So that that's, uh, as you can see here, uh, through an interview, interview process, uh, surveys, um, and, uh, you know, a very uh, purposeful uh, gathering, information gathering process. So that'll inform um, the design. And then you see there's the other parameters here, uh, accessibility, uh, understand the infrastructure that it needs to run on in order for it to be maintained and, and uh, there's a training component um, understanding you know who the editors are making sure they have the capability of uh, maintaining and, and contributing um, the there's a reference to content and, and um, the way in which that gets um, integrated um, and uh, also the, uh, the cyber security issue, you know, is a growing issue more and more and more. Um, that's, a, that's another element of the RFP and the expertise we're looking for from the bidders. So uh, there's a quick snapshot of, of the RFP and then um, the results of the bid, as I said, just at two o'clock today, we got uh, very pleased to see we have four four bids, um, uh, I have them here, and it's from an um, organization called uh, Interactive Educational Services, they also call themselves Cyber School. Uh, Aptigy uh, is a second bidder, Digital Creative is a third bidder, and uh, Rainstorm is a fourth bidder. Um, 
so what we're doing now is uh, Andy Brown, the consultant that helps design the RFP with our, our feedback, is evaluating the four bids. He's creating a rubric that essentially identifies, well, number one, did they meet our bid spec? Do they have the scope of services that we've asked for? Um, and, and then identifying the strengths and weaknesses of, of each proposal, uh, along with uh, understanding cost in terms of are we dealing with a single kind of upfront charge in their proposal, or is the relationship more along the lines of a proprietary sort of a, a software that there's an ongoing fee. So those are all important along with the cybersecurity to what extent, you know, are they keeping us safe, you know, preventing a uh, sort of a forced shutdown of the site and those sorts of things. Um, we expect to meet with them on Monday and, um, and uh, have, uh, I don't know if you want to have this on your agenda again, next week or if you want us to uh, if you want to authorize us to award the bid to the um, to the uh, preferred vendor e either scenario uh, is fine with us um, I'd like to see the I'd like to see any Brown's report good Just okay yep. So you have you have time next so we'll put it on the agenda next, next Wednesday week. Yeah. Very well. and also and just in terms of specifics and again just trying to think about how this is going to serve us, for you know, for as, as far into the future as the technology holds up, is um, having someone, you know, having the kind, having someone that's there may be an advantage to paying more money for somebody that's going to be going along with us all the way and doing the up, upgrading and stuff, because uh, we don't, you know, we may need to hire somebody, and if we hire somebody, we've got everything that goes with that as opposed to a, somebody who's contracted. To we're not, we're not committed to the lowest bid. We want the best bid. Yeah, proposal for our school district. Yeah, so yeah, so that's why I would see it. Yeah. The the other component that we've um, pursued is is just like with any significant project, we we are asking Andy Brown or TMS Consulting for uh, a proposal for assisting with project implementation. Just just like we do a clerk of the works at the academy building, uh, somebody with the expertise that, that has done this a hundred times or many times. Um, so I, I should have that, which kind to of show us addresses your, your work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. addresses your point, David. Yeah, thanks. So I have two questions. Did you did you send this to us? Or can, no, we just got these. Can today. you send this the document that you just shared? Oh, the RFP. Mm -hmm. No, that we got. Yeah, we did get that. We did. Yeah. Okay, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't it's, it's in the so whole stack of of the Bart set. And so maybe I'm going to ask a question that's um, addressed in there. I guess I'm I'm interested in understanding how if you're if the lowest bidder is not the one you're going to select which i am not saying that i think that that's always the appropriate uh, determining factor um i guess i'm interested in the other things that the other factors that you would that would help to make the decision yeah that so, rubric and, and yeah, is that is that in in that mm -hmm. it's, okay, I'll so it's, that. it's every point on that um okay. scope of service scope. Scope. It's just, it's kind of like rating to what extent does this vendor, um, you know, complete the uh, request that we're asking for, and it could turn out to be the lowest bidder, but it's uh, generally not. <laughs> Are we allowed to ask any of the pricing of the bids, or is it not clear because they could have done it in? Uh, yeah. Like this is your first year contract, this is your second year contract, or here's your flat. Oh no, is we definitely <laughs> will we'll okay. talk about pricing. You, you can tell us that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a big range, and that's that's yeah. the issue is that um, one of the bids is uh, thirty nine thousand eight hundred, and another one is thirteen thousand. Okay. So okay. the thirteen thousand <laughs> is likely to have ongoing fees into the future. The okay. thirty nine is likely to have a one, one, one and done. done, and if you want additional support, you know, here, here yeah. you go, yeah. kind of thing. So okay. that, those are the things that we'll be yeah. sorting out. Okay. This is why we have consultants. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, very important to have the experts with us. Uh, okay, so that was um, website development and where we are. Safe to say we're happy to get four. That's yeah, great. Yeah. An hour, yeah. And, and is, uh, 
do you imagine there might potentially be more bids? I think it, it closes in like next No, year. it closed today. Oh, it closed today. I think yeah. I. Yeah. It, it, it was issued. Um, it was issued uh, at least a month ago, and we're asking for uh, this project to be uh, initiated July first and completed on October first. Yeah. Excellent. That's so as long, yeah, as long as we we can award the bid um, before July first, you know, I think it's a realistic um, timeline. Cool. Okay, so we'll we'll um, take this up next week and Good. hopefully know who we're, we'll be working with. Great. And year-to-date financial update? Okay. Um, um, more documents I had sent uh, earlier in the week, and I'll do another share screen. Um, so we have a summary, and then we have a lots of uh, details. Um, so I'll start with the summary and then, um, and then if you have questions, we can, we can jump into that. Um, let me see if I can find the summary. Oh, there it is. Nice. Okay. So. So this document is the same format as what you're accustomed to seeing in our annual reports, and um, and uh, it's the kind of the culmination. The, it's a one-page document of uh, when the budget process is finished uh, each year. So um, just as sort of a reminder, um, we are organized at the SU in these functional areas, the four functional areas admin and, and support of instruction, and then special education services, um, grant um, funded support, and then our food services. So, uh, and you know, by the way, when we think about meetings and schedules, we typically schedule a meeting for budget development around each one of those. So that's four meetings in itself. Uh, but that's only typical. I don't know, uh, you know, necessarily how that will go in the future. So, so I'll start here with the, the expenditure side. 28163000 is the SU amended current year budget. Um, you would have approved as a board the 23155000 for FY22. But as you know, over the course of the year, uh, ESSER funds uh, and a few other grant funds have become available. Um, so you see we've added $5 million to the, um, the initial uh, board approved budget that is all, of course, funded through grants. Um, this is all part of um, agency of ed requirements that, um, unlike the old days when grants got approved after an annual meeting, you could kind of keep track of them on a spreadsheet or sort of an off book thing. I, I, I was happy to do away with that years ago. Um, so when there's a, an approved grant by a state and federal agency, we add it and we amend uh, the um, public record, which is the general. And then, and then do you add the expenditures into the lines where they Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, because cool. yeah, that's super important to track uh, progress. Yeah. Um, so, and then the, the, the uh, data here to the far right, two point. Six million. Um, this is through May, uh, so for the month of June, um, this would be the still the amount against budget, right? Twenty-five million spent versus twenty-eight million dollar budget. Um, that's the amount potentially that we will be dispersing uh, this month. Um, I think it's unlikely that we'll disperse all of the grant. Um, funds and you can see that in the amendments when you, when you just kind of quickly scan this data you know no no change here in the in the support of instruction transportation and admin you see the two numbers are the same 3.9 3.9 a little change in special ed 14.8 versus 15.1 the big change here is in grants 2.7 million to 7.3 million um, if, if we don't spend the grant, then, um, then we don't get the revenue. So um, it's, the point is, is it's, it's a self-balancing thing. Um, uh, I have a question about that. Mm -hmm. the, um, 
I remember when the when the second essay came through, they, they emphasized that all the guidelines and requirements were going to be the same right down the line, but that the, this last one, the, the the one that we're in now for the last, these last last two years, that that you could change, you could apply for grants for particular things, but you could change them as mm -hmm. things went along. So if we wound up not you know, we, we get to the, we've got 50 bucks left over at the end of the year and it goes into the next year. Can we apply to use that for something else that just emerged that we really see a need for? We could, but at this point we, we have to start um, pushing things out of the, the requests that have already been made for fiscal year 23. Um, but at the same time, we're encouraging everybody to ask for what they need you know mm -hmm. and so for a lot of that it's been social workers and um the uh literacy coaches the um additional nursing um but um maybe another way to say it is uh you're referring to the 9.5 million in esser three yes this is this is just esser two this is still two we're wrapping up esser two and i'm saying of this uh, you see unspent in the um, grant section here, 2.4 million. Mm -hmm. um, there's a good, obviously we know we're not gonna write the check for the Academy School Windows Project in June because it's not even scheduled to be done until uh, August. So there are things that are simply gonna They're roll just gonna in. get paid later. Yeah, yeah. But, but we were shooting for initially about half of an ESSER 3 in fiscal year 23 and half in 24. Well, we're already up to spending 6 million. So half of nine is, you know, four and a half. Yeah. We're already at 6 million for 23, 23 yeah. which means we can't sustain everything we're doing in 23 and 24. So to get to your point, yes, we can make amendments. We're encouraged to make amendments. Um, but at this point, it's going to be more, you know, as we knew it was coming, what's essential, what's having the impact that we expected, um, and what is mission accomplished and therefore we no longer need that resource, which uh, to some extent is construction. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. 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 So that, that, that's where we are at in that process, but um, we've done very well with the uh, Agency of Education in terms of meeting their requirements and uh, uh, you do have to spend the money, document it to get reimbursed. That's why when you look at revenues, um, the revenue number is 4.6 million still receivable, you know, more than the, the payable. Well, the reason is because uh, we probably have eight or 900,000 right now that's receivable based on what we've just reported as spent, and we won't get that until in at least two weeks. So there's always a lag between us spending the money and then waiting for the uh, agency to reimburse us. It's nice that they didn't change the rules from one to two to three. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the SR three is quite different, but it, it's uh, but it's not it's not different than what we had anticipated in the FY twenty three budget development process. So so it's consistent. So that's, that's the quick uh, overview. I, all of this is on the uh, website, along with the, with the detail reports that are, again, broken out in those four sections. And you know, there are about 80 pages of, of uh, each one of those functional areas. Um, and maybe one last thing I'll mention is that um, we always put monthly financial statements, even though it's not always on the agenda for the SU, uh, on the... Um, the website under uh, it's the SU website, central office, and then finance, and then you can go to year to date financial statements. Um, and uh, we have it for both the SD and the SU. We also have all the audits for prior years and um, most recent. So the information is available if, if folks are interested. I think that's all I had. Great. I know that all that paperwork is under finance, and they have to go to find under central office to find the finance. Yeah. And that's all. I can't and wait to, to I can't wait until we make that a little easier yeah. because I have to think about it every time. Yeah. <laughs> so, but thank you for mentioning that because there's a lot of information on our website. It's just so compartmentalized. Yeah, it's hard to find. So great. 
Okay, um, so this brings us to, we have some time allocated for public comment. If there's any anyone in the public um, that's been hanging out and has... We do have particip participants. I don't see any hands up yet. I don't see any hands either. If you have any comments on anything that was on the agenda, this would be the time to ask. Okay, seeing none and that we have no further business, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. At 8.15. <laughs> so thank you, David. Is there a second? Second. Somebody wants to stay. <laughs> Second. Second, Gary. Okay. Um, I see you in the chair. Adjourned to 815.